In the states of North and South Carolina, the majority of the workforce, 200,000 people, work in cotton mills. In many Carolina towns, there's no other place to work. Life here has been dominated by the mill since the 1800s. Company towns, company houses, company built schools and churches. The mills provided people with a living. In exchange, mill workers gave back a lifetime of hard work. Our parents worked in the mill. We lived in a, a mill house. And if the, when the, each child got of age to go to work, if they didn't go to work in the mill too, they would fire the parents and make them move out of the house. And so therefore you just was almost compelled to go to work for the same company. The looms of a cotton mill never stop. Each one demands a constant supply of thread, always the pressure to keep up. The air is thick with humidity. The noise dulls the senses. But the real danger here could go unnoticed. Nearly invisible, millions of tiny fibers thicken the air. Years of breathing this cotton dust can leave you crippled with lung disease. Doctors call it bisonosis. The mill workers call it brown lung. Cotton dust attacks the tiny airways of the lungs, making it difficult for oxygen to get into the bloodstream. Eventually, the lungs constrict and become permanently damaged. That dust in the cotton mill weren't me. His lungs collapsed on him. They were just eat up with lint and dust, and so he's not worked in a cotton mill any since. The doctor says there's no cure for brown lungs, what they've told me, that I would have to live with it the rest of my life. Like the noise of the weave room, shortness of breath was taken for granted in the mills. Bad lungs forced many to an early retirement. Although the American textile industry first wrote about brown lung in a trade journal in 1940, and scientists described it as far back as 1705, mill workers were never told that cotton dust was the cause of their lung disease. <laughs> 